Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the FSX404 channel. Today we're going to do an approach into Innsbruck, Austria. Innsbruck Airport is located in the Austrian Alps. And even though the elevation of the airport is only 1900 feet, it's surrounded by high mountains on all sides, making the approach into Innsbruck very tricky. Although there are approaches from both the east and the west into Innsbruck, today we're going to do the localizer DME east approach. Now, in addition to the localizer approach, we'll also do the circle to land procedure for runway 8. So this video is going to be a localizer DME east approach with a circle to land runway 8. Localizer DME east approach into Innsbruck begins at the Rattenberg NDB. We'll arrive at Rattenberg NDB at 9,500 feet or above. We'll depart the NDB at a radial of 210 from the NDB to the point D21 or distance 21 from the localizer. We will descend to or maintain 9,500 feet until we intercept the glide slope. Now, once we reach the point D21, we will intercept the localizer. At point D18, we will intercept the glide slope at 9,500 feet. Now, this is a localizer approach, but it also has a glide slope. Even though they don't call it an ILS approach, it does have a glide slope. Uh, now, there's a couple of things to note about this glide slope. First, as you can see, we don't really need the glide slope to do this approach. We can do it as a step down descent. The approach plate gives us altitudes we need to be at at every two miles. Uh, second thing to note is that this glide slope has a pitch of 3.8 degrees, almost a full degree more than the standard 3 degree glide slope. This different glide slope pitch will give us a higher rate of descent than the usual 3 degree glide slope. To find out what our rate of descent needs to be to maintain this glide slope, we'll go to the rate of descent chart, or as we call it, a cheat sheet. Now, on the cheat sheet, the top row denotes our ground speed. This is not the indicated airspeed, this is not the true airspeed, this is our ground speed. It's one of the few times we actually use the ground speed is for these uh, glide slopes. On a far left column, we have a glide slope pitch or vertical angle. Now, this sheet does not have a 3.8 degree angle, but the closest one is 4 degrees. Now we can follow the row across 4 degrees until we reach the numbers for 150, 180 and 210 knot columns. Now if we are landing on runway 8 that means that the wind is usually coming from our back as we are on the glide slope. That means our ground speed is going to be higher than for an approach that we're doing on ILS with a headwind. So for this approach I'm going to use the Airbus 320, so our ground speed is going to be anywhere from 150 to 210 knots. It depends on the winds. So for a 4 degree glide slope we have a rate of descent of 1065 feet per minute for 150 knots ground speed, 1275 feet per minute for 180 knots, and 1490 feet per minute for 210 knots. So for our approach, for a 3.8 degree glide slope, our descent rate will be from 1000 to 1400 feet per minute. Now for this video, we are going to follow this glide slope as we are on the localizer, and we're going to follow the localizer and the glide slope all the way down to 4470 feet. 4470 feet is our MDA, minimum descent altitude. Now at the same time, our MDA is going to be at the ABSAM NDB. So we're going to be at the ABSAM NDB at 4,470 feet. Now, if we reach the ABSAM NDB and we don't have the runway in sight, we don't see the runway lights, and we don't see the mountains, we have to execute a missed approach. And you guys can take a look at the missed approach procedure yourself. We really have to be able to see the area around us in order to do this landing, especially that last turn. Now, as I said before, for this approach, we are going to do a circle to land procedure. There are standard circle to land procedures, but at airports like Innsbruck, tough airports, and especially in mountainous area, there are specific circle to land procedures. The circle to land procedure runway 8 at Innsbruck begins at the ABSAM NDB. We are going to be at 4,470 feet at the ABSAM NDB. Now, the circle to land procedure can be done at 3,700 feet. That is the minimum. But that doesn't mean that we have to be at 3,700 feet. We can be a little bit higher, and at an airport like Innsbruck, we'll probably stay a little bit higher, like 4,500 feet to 4,200 feet. Then we'll descend to 3,700 feet just as we're reaching the point where we have to do that turn, that 180 degree steep turn, during which we also have to descend pretty rapidly. As we reach the ABSAM NDB, 
we will turn to a heading of 229 until we get pretty close to the mountains. As we get close to the mountains, we will turn to a heading of 264 which will be parallel to the runway. In effect, this will be nothing more than a downwind leg of a traffic pattern. We will slowly descend or maintain 3700 feet and this is also where we do our pre-landing checklist, we put our landing gear down. Now, once we're on this downwind leg, the only thing that's left is that 180 degree turn onto the final. Now this turn is very reminiscent of the turn done at Paro Airport. We are in a confined area and this turn has to be done at specific air speeds. If we're too fast, we're not going to make the turn. We also have to be at a specific altitude when we roll out onto the final because we only have seconds to make our final adjustments so we can make a safe landing. So this final 180 degree turn has to be done under control. We'll do this turn between 130 to 140 knots at a minimum bank of 30 degrees. So it's going to be 30 degrees or more. Now don't go crazy and put 60 degrees in there. There's no need. If our indicated airspeed is between 130 to 140 knots, a 30 to 35 degree bank will be just fine. Now when do we start our turn onto the final? When we are a beam of the edge of the mountain on our right side, we will begin our turn. We should roll out at 2,500 to 2,800 feet, any higher or lower, and we'll have to do crazy unsafe things with a plane to make a landing. So just like Paro, this last turn has to be done at a specific speed, at a steep bank, with an exact altitude loss. So you can see what kind of a pilot you have to be to be able to fly this approach. Just remember, as we're rolling out of this turn, even if we're not lined up 100% with the runway, we'll make adjustments really quick and lined up as fast as we can. After that, it's just another landing, just like at any other airport. Now for this approach, as I said earlier, we're going to use the Wilco Airbus A320. We'll be coming from the south, descending down to 9,500 feet, just a few miles before the Rattenberg NDB, and then we'll do the rest of the approach. So let's get ourselves in the airplane, guys, and let's fly this approach. All right, guys, we're in the airplane right now. We are flying toward the Rattenberg NDB and descending down to 9,500. At this point, we'll start a turn to intercept a radial of 210 from the Rattenberg NDB. It makes, uh, it makes no difference here because we really have four miles of clearance on each side of this airway to make this turn. Descending below 10,000 feet. So all we have to do is be close enough to that 210 radial from the NDB. Once again, this is one of my FS passenger flights. It's not just the approach I'm doing, I'm actually doing a whole flight from another airport into Innsbruck. And I'm using the actual approach procedure uh, to land at Innsbruck. So throughout this flight we are going to hear some FS passenger sounds. Alright, we'll keep it a steady turn to a heading of 210, a uh, radial of 210 from the at Rattenberg NDB. And I know we overflew it a little bit, but that's okay, it doesn't matter, we are close enough. At this point, we are pretty close to the radial, so let's switch the nav mode to the ILS mode. And we can see the localizer needle. The needle is live, it's starting to come in, so we're going to turn to intercept this localizer. Alright, we're at 9,500 feet. We're going to stay at 9,500 feet until we intercept the glide slope. Uh, there we are, we are established on the localizer. And uh, one thing to note about this approach is that the localizer and the whole ILS into Innsbruck is pretty long. It's about 20 miles long. Remember we intercepted it at point D21, that's 21 miles from the localizer. Uh, so it's going to take a long time to get there. Another thing to note is that there is no glide slope right now. The glide slope will come in about a one mile before we have to intercept it and start our descent. And as you can see, the weather is uh, IMC, uh, IFR right now, so we are flying solely by our instruments. 
doesn't matter that we can see the ground a little bit. We're solely flying by our instruments right now. Nothing else. Let's get back up to 9,500 feet. We don't want to descend down too low here. There's mountains on all sides. And there's the glide slope. It came in. Uh, so we're still going to maintain 9,500 until we intercept it. There's the glide slope, it's coming in, and let's start our descent down to follow the glide slope. Now, as we remember from the briefing part of the approach, the descent rate for 150 knots to 210 knots ground speed will be 1,000 to 1,400 feet per minute. Our ground speed right now is at 170 knots. So for 170 knots, we'll start off our descent with about 1,100 feet per minute. But then we'll make adjustments as we go. And as you can see throughout my flights, I do use altitude bugs, heading bugs, and speed bugs to help me out with my approach. As you can see, we're doing this approach in the Airbus. And one thing that makes Airbus easier to fly on approaches especially is the auto trim. We basically put the nose where we want to, we'll get our descent rate, and the auto trim will keep it at that descent rate. Uh, in a Boeing, we would actually have to put the nose down, trim the plane, and then make sure it stays trimmed. Whereas in an Airbus, it will stay trimmed until we move the stick. Uh, now this is going to bring me to another point because this is a long approach so we got a few seconds to talk and uh, let's talk about flying approaches in the flight simulator in real life pilots have the plane on autopilot doing most of the approach they basically shut off the autopilot at 3,000 feet or thereabouts if the weather is clear if not they'll wait until they break out of the clouds and then shut off the autopilot but one thing to keep in mind is that those guys flying those big jets have years of experience and thousands of uh, manual approaches and really hours and hours of flying, thousands of hours of flying. But this is the flight simulator. If you're doing an approach in the flight simulator, try to do it manually. That's just my advice. Use what I call the 18,000 foot rule. If you're above 18,000 feet, then you can put it on autopilot. And if you're below 18,000 feet, try to fly it manually. You don't have to be perfect, you really don't. There's no such thing as a perfect approach. But if you're using autopilot all the time, you're not really getting any better. And the whole point of doing approaches in the flight simulator is to get better. All of my approaches in the flight simulator are manually flown. Whether I'm posting them here for everybody to see on YouTube, or I just fly on my own, they're all manually flown. Okay, so let's get back to flying this approach right now. Uh, the glide slope is staying centered, so we have judged our rate of descent pretty good. So we're just going to keep it there. Uh, the 1100 feet per minute uh, rate of descent is working out pretty good. Actually, it's working out great. Now we can see the ground uh, below us. But we're still flying by our instruments until we clear the clouds. Now, I haven't flown this Airbus in a long time. I actually haven't flown it for months. So I'm still trying to relearn the systems in this Airbus. Which is kind of like my real life flying because I fly five or six different types of planes all the time. And the only way I can make heads and tails out of them is uh, go over the pilot's operating handbook the night before. Over the airplane systems, air speeds, and some of the emergency procedure stuff. But it makes life interesting. Alright, so now we can see the airport, so we can switch to a full visual approach. As a matter of fact, we are going to uh, keep checking our instruments during this approach because uh, we are in a mountainous area. And in a mountainous area, because we have valleys, we have ridges, we have edges of the mountain, we can get a visual illusion that can be very misleading. And we can have the plane at an unusual attitude and we wouldn't even know about it. So we're going to cross check with our attitude indicator to make sure that we're in an attitude we want to be in. And from this point on, we can break off from the instrument approach. We're going fully visual. What that means is that we're going to cross-check with our instruments, but we're going to do the approach with our eyes. 
Now we're going to reduce our rate of descent. As you can see, the glide slope has moved down, and that is just because we have to do that circle to land procedure, and we want to stay a little bit high for that circle to land procedure until the very end. Let's level off at about 4,500 feet, uh, and then we're going to do slowly and gently, we're going to descend down to uh, 3,700 feet. Now one thing to remember very clearly between instrument approaches and visual approaches is that in instrument approaches we have to be exact. We have to be on the ILS, on the localizer, exactly at the altitude we're supposed to be. For visual approaches we have a lot more freedom. What's required for visual approaches is a lot more of a pilot's judgment than anything else. How close do I get to a mountain? As close as you deem safe. How far can I go from the airport? As far as you deem safe. There's a lot of judgment involved in visual approaches. And the way I'm doing this is just one way to do it. Now from this point, we're going to do our circle to land procedure. We are at the starting point of our circle to land procedure. And as soon as we clear this mountain off to our uh, left side, we're going to start our uh, circle to land procedure. Let's turn to a heading of 229. And as we're turning to the heading of 229, we're going to head straight for those mountains ahead of us. We're going to get as close as we can to them because we have to do that 180 degree turn uh, onto the final in that confined area. And as you can see, we don't have that much room to do that 180 degree turn. So we're going to get as close as we can to the mountain on our left side. I'm just using uh, heading bugs here, heading 264. And as soon as we're close enough, we're going to turn to that heading of 264. Just a few more seconds. And let's start our turn to a heading of 264. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to land. Please remain seated until we have stopped. Basically, this is going to be our, uh, almost like a downwind leg. We'll be flying parallel to the airport, which is going to be on our right-hand side. As you can see, there's a little road down there. We can stay just a little bit south of that road, and we're doing good so far. There's the airport. Actually, we, can, we can't barely see it. We're descending down to 3,700 feet for that last turn. We're gonna reduce our airspeed to 135 knots for that last turn. Our landing gear is down. Alright, so this upcoming turn is going to make all the difference. It has to be done precisely and exactly. If you remember from the pyro approach, uh, how we do these turns, we're going to cheat a little bit. Just before we start our turn, we're going to lift the nose just a little bit to reduce that rate of descent because it's going to be excessive once we turn the airplane to uh, 30 degrees of bank. There it is, almost there. Okay, there's the edge of that mountain, and we can start our turn, lift the nose up a little bit, put the plane in a 30 degree bank, 135 knots, and just keep the airplane there at uh, 30 degrees of bank or more. We don't have to be too excessive on this turn, 30 to 35 degrees should do it at this airspeed. Don't pay attention to the co-pilot on this one. This is from FS Passengers. We're doing good. We're going to turn just before this road. And there's the runway right in ahead of us. We are right where we're supposed to be. Lined up with the runway at 2,600 feet. We are close enough. And there it is, guys. All we have to do now is make a landing at this airport just like at any other airport. The runway is long enough, but we're going to try to land this airplane at the beginning of the runway. 500. Approaching minimum. 400. Minimum. 300. Two hundred. 
100. 100. 50. 40. 50. 30. 20. Okay, a little bounce there. That's all right. It happens to the best of us. Center line, reverse thrusters. Reverse thrust set. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. 80 knots. Yeah.